everyone. Welcome back to another podcast adventure. My name is Midnight Mike, and I'm joined by Joe. He's over there shirtless. No, I put one on. Oh, you did? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we also have Cretched on the, the big screen. He's over there. And we have a guest with us today. He is Darren Schaefer. He does a podcast all about D.B. Cooper. And you can reach him or just search for him on iTunes. It's called the, the Cooper Vortex Podcast. He'll be speaking at a convention coming up called D.B. Cooper Con. You can check it out. There's a link in the description, dbcoopercon.com. And uh, I'm surprised that there's a, an entire convention, an entire symposium devoted to the mysterious case of D.B. Cooper. So, Darren, thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy day to come and chit-chat with us. Thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Oh, man, no problem. We don't often have Saturday guests because, well, not a lot of people want to get up this early to, to, to talk shit with us. So we really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm willing to get up at 9.30 to talk shit with you guys. All right, nice. <laughs> I so, was, let's start at the beginning. Who is D.B. Cooper? Yeah. Who is D.B. Cooper? Um, D.B. Cooper is a name that was given uh, to him by accident through a media mistake. Uh, on November 24th, 1971, um, a guy bought a plane ticket from a flight from Portland to Seattle, a uh, one-way flight, paid $20 for it. He gave his name as Dan Cooper, boarded the plane. Shortly after takeoff, he gives a note to a stewardess. Uh, she assumes it's just another businessman hitting on her. Uh, so she puts her note, puts the note in her pocket and doesn't even look at it. And then she comes by again. He grabs her and he's like, ma'am, you might want to look at that note. I have a bomb. So she takes the note out, reads it. Uh, basically, he's hijacking the plane. He wants $200,000 and four parachutes. Um, by the time he lands in Seattle, if he gets all that, he'll let the passengers off the plane, and then they're going to take off for Mexico City. They land in Seattle. He gets his demands, and then he has really specific flight instructions for the pilot. Um, so specific, like the pilot didn't know that the plane was able to fly that way, although D.B. Cooper did. That specific plane he hijacked had rear air stairs, so the, the stairs would lower on the back of the plane, and then you could board or uh, deplane uh, that way so the plane could fly into smaller airports. But anyway, so he wants the plane to take off with those rear air stairs down, and the pilot didn't even know that that was possible. So they had to call into air traffic control, air traffic control didn't know either. So they had to contact Boeing to see if that was possible. And Boeing said, yeah, that's, that is possible. So they take off. They agreed they couldn't fly to Mexico city. So they changed it. They'd stop in Reno to refuel on the way there. And in between Seattle and Reno, uh, he jumps out of the plane with the money and his bomb, never to be seen or heard from again. I, as I I grew up, you know, watching unsolved mysteries and various uh, shows like that, this story would come up over and over again. Who is DB Cooper? Was he ex-military? Was was he just uh, a bank robber that got lucky jumping out of an airplane plane like that? Because what was what was rumored is that one, it was very as it'd be a very difficult jump to do out of that plane is there any validity to that claim oh it's a very difficult jump he's jumping from ten thousand feet at night um with cloud cover and it, cold and wet and he would be jumping into a pretty harsh environment the area they believe he jumped to uh is heavily wooded why do you why do you think that this this story is this, this the mist the mystery of D.B. Cooper has persisted over all these years. Uh, I think it has persisted for all these years because people started to root for him essentially right away that he stuck it to the man. And no one was hurt doing this. He did hijack a plane, which is bad, but um, no one was physically harmed. The only person who may have been injured or killed was himself. 
So I, I've, I've listened to a segments of your podcast, the, the Cooper Vortex, and you do a pretty good job of dissecting who potentially D.B. Cooper could have been, uh, some of the, the motives behind it. And your latest episode, D.B. Cooper was a railroader. You, did a, you had an interview with a guy who didn't want to go on record with his, with his name or, or uh, who he was. Can you uh, talk about your, your latest episode a little bit? Yeah, my latest episode, D.B. Cooper was a railroader. So that guy, um, I've become friends with him uh, over the last few months. He has a, a pretty high up position in the Army as an analyst and isn't really interested in his name being associated with this. He just kind of sees it as a hobby. And there are a bunch of crazies in this community, so I understand that. But he he sort of was interested in the case and a uh, really smart guy, really great researcher, and just thought, okay, well, there's a couple of avenues that people haven't explored here. Um, and he started to look into him for himself and ended up with a suspect, with a guy he believes was D.B. Cooper, uh, a Pennsylvania railroader by the name of William J. Smith. A real, and so what was uh, this guy's background? Was he like a paratrooper? Was he just a, a hobbyist when it comes to parachuting and jumping out of planes? He was was a paratrooper in the military. Um, and then he was an aerial photographer, which, you know, would give him some skills and being able to identify where he's at in the air, which if you're standing on the rear air stairs of uh, a 727, 10,000 feet over the Pacific Northwest might be of some use. So when it comes to D.B. Cooper and the requested amount of money that he asked for, is there any rumor of why that specific amount? Why not ask for a million dollars? Was it just like you couldn't carry that much weight or it was harder to deal with that much money? Why do you think he asked for that, that specific amount of money? That's a good question. So if you want to get into like the conspiracy theory area, I do inside information. <laughs> That's what this show is. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting that he asked for 200,000 because they had, um, the airlines had been hijacked and been getting into trouble before, mostly for political reasons, but for whatever reason, they had $250,000 in cash ready to go in the event there was something to happen like this. So the amount he asked for was within that with cash they had on hand ready to go. So, so where, maybe he knew. Where did um, one of the, uh, the people in the chat asked, where did, is it, is it known where exactly he jumped out at like wh over what state? Over, uh, no, not even over what state. You couldn't even agree on that. But there is a drop zone that people refer to. So when they're flying, D.B. Cooper asked the one stewardess left on the plane to go back into the cockpit. And so the pilots and the stewardess are sitting in the cockpit, and they noticed at a point in time there was a pressure bump in the cabin, and the plane needed some correction, enough that he had to maneuver the plane a little bit. And they noted this, um, this particular time, it's 811 to 813, depending on which transcript you're reading. But then they went and theorized that was when he jumped and then the air stairs bounced back up. So they actually took that plane, flew it over the ocean with a 200 pound weight on the back and pushed it off to see if it would do the exact same thing, the same oscillation. And it did. So they have like this point on the, the flight path mapped out as where his supposed drop zone would be. That's where they did the, uh, the National Guard did a search there. Um, and that's in the, around the town of Ariel, Washington, Amboy, Yakult. That's the theorized drop zone, but different suspects and other people theorize it's other places. But, so that, that, and you're going with that? Is, you said oh, like over Washington in somewhere up there? Yeah, when people talk about where he landed, usually they're referring to that one drop zone around Ariel, Washington. But other people have speculated he landed in Clay Ellum, Washington, Aurora, Oregon, in the river. So when he when he jumped out of the plane, 
He lands down. Do you have any speculation as to whether or not he had a co-conspirator? Did he have a partner to pick him up and take him to, I don't, a safe place? It just depends on uh, what person's theory. I'm going uh, with your theory. What do you think happened? <laughs> I, I really don't know. I have no idea what happened to him. That's the thing about this is once he jumped out of that plane, no one has seen or heard from him again. There is no evidence after that. Um, there was uh, there was some evidence. I, I'm sorry. There was $5,800 found uh, on the beach uh, outside Tina Bar, Washington. That's outside Vancouver, Washington. And uh, an eight-year-old boy found it in the sand when he was having a picnic with his family. And that was from the hijack, that money. Um, but that's the only thing that's ever been found. And where it was found doesn't make any sense and only adds more question to the story. So uh, the federal government at this point, you know, after after this, they kind of look like a bunch of schmucks. They couldn't catch this guy. This guy got away with $200,000, was able to do this giant caper cap- that captured the mind of uh, the entire nation, probably even the world. Is is that this, at that point after is the the what is the mindset of the FBI if you can even know that? Well, we, luckily we can know that because the lead agent wrote a book about this, Ralph Hemmelsbach, who just recently passed away. I want to say he was ninety four, <clears throat> but they they looked into everything. I mean, they looked into skydiving clubs because in nineteen seventy one, um. Sport parachuting wasn't all that big. There was a couple of small groups around the country. Uh, and maybe I think there was one or two people manufacturing parachutes for that. So there weren't a lot of people doing it like today. So they looked into all those groups, all those clubs. They looked into um, retired military personnel because one weird thing about it is, you know, the stewardess has penned his age as mid to late forties and you know, committing such a bold, dangerous crime like this is a weird thing for a man in his mid to late forties to do. So the FBI looked, they say they've looked into thousands of people and they've looked into weirdly dozens of confessions. Ha! Dozens of so, confessions. So these are probably imposters who want to get the notoriety of the DB Cooper fable, but they're probably full of crap. Is that the idea? Yeah, but some of them are weird. Like uh, Dwayne Weber confessed only to his wife on his deathbed. Mm. That's a hell of a thing to say. You figure your last words like "I love you." I wish I had more time with you. No, he's like, "Nah, I am. I'm Superman." Yeah, she claims that he said, "I'm Dan Cooper," and she didn't even know the name Dan Cooper, so she looked it up at her library because this was, I think, like '95. Uh, so she looked it up at her library and realized it was D.B. Cooper, and there was a D.B. Cooper book at her library. She picked it up, and it had her dead husband's writing in the margins of the book. Ah, oh, wow. That is that is so, like so, some TV so, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, so like handwriting that she thought was recognizable? Yes. Huh. That is... That's that's fascinating. So, what do you think about that? Do you think that guy, he was actually, or is he just making bullshit up on his deathbed? I want to believe that people on their deathbed are going to say some sort of truth, going to say something meaningful, and not just, you know, bullshit your loved ones. Right. You're just going to shit your pants and croak. Yeah. Or croak and shit your pants. I heard that happens. I don't Either way. Know. Well, what do you I, think? I mean- there's another guy who confessed on his deathbed to his brother. Uh, Kenny Christensen tried to tell his brother on his deathbed. I have something to tell you. And his brother was like, no, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. And then looks into it and you know believes his brother's DB Cooper and then sends a private investigator to look into it and hires this guy of Robert Blevins to help out. And now Robert Blevins is completely you know, dedicated a large portion of his life to the fact that Kenny Christensen is D.B. Cooper. 
I mean, in, unless we live in some sort of weird Mandela reality, uh, only one of these people can be telling the truth. Unless all of them are telling the truth and they all lived the, the same same life and it all split off in some Mandela effect kind of scenario. Oh, listen to Mike. He's yeah, but crazy. I'm just going crazy here. <laughs> but, but, you know. Um, let's, let's stay in reality yeah, for a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to. So <laughs> obviously only one of these people can be can be telling the truth. And on your latest podcast, you thought it was possibly some. You guys talked about the possibility of it being someone, uh, being a railroader, maybe someone in Pennsylvania. Uh, with every lead that you get, with every new piece of information you get, do you get super excited and say, this is it? Or do you just throw it in the box of other leads and go, I'll, I'll investigate it when I can? I've only had one where I thought, oh my God, I need to investigate that myself a little bit. Seems serious. And that's an episode is going to be my next episode to come out, which is about a guy named Wolfgang Gossett, who was a paranormal investigator, a host of a paranormal radio show. Uh, he was in special forces himself and a survivalist. Well, that, priest, I mean, that's the criteria. You'd feel like if anybody could do it, it'd be a person like that. Now, yeah, uh, he's very interesting. I just interviewed his son, uh, Greg Gossett, and I, I came away from that feeling like, oh, my God, this could really be D.B. Cooper. And weirdly, Greg was the third person I'd interviewed that told me his father was D.B. Cooper. So at the, at the upcoming convention that you'll be speaking <laughs> at, this is on November 22nd, uh, D.B. Cooper Con. How, what is going to happen at this convention? It's going to be eight hours of people talking about D.B. Cooper. And so and, uh, I, is, is, is this like the, the first time that, that this is, is this first annual, second annual? Like how long has it been going on? This is the second annual version of this conference uh, put together by Eric Euless, who's been on the show, who has his own suspect. Um, but there were other versions in, in 2014, there was, uh, a conference and then in 2011 there was a symposium um and then for like 35 years there was db cooper days every uh every friday after thanksgiving at the aerial store and i did an episode with the stores um the son of the gal who owned that store and when she died the county took away all of the uh business licenses because there's no way that place would ever be up to any sort of code uh which is sad so that was the end of the db cooper days at the aerial store mm. joe i cut you off i think you you may have had a question i don't but i i i i mean i i've been saving one but i i don't think you cut me off but i'll you know accept your apology and uh resent you Okay. Uh, hence, henceforth. Yeah. But uh, I did what you know while we we're talking about all this. I did you know do some googling and all this other stuff. So there's this movie. What do you think about the pursuit of DB Cooper from 1981? Uh, it's not very good, although it does have Robert <laughs> Duvall in it. Okay. Um, the movie is, I would just say weird. It does. It has DB Cooper hijacking in the first few minutes, and then he just goes like on a drunken. Defender. across the united states with some gal it's for it's ridiculous but not the most ridiculous movie about db cooper uh that would be bigfoot versus db cooper yeah is there, <laughs> is there any truth to that movie no it's more ridiculous than that it's way more ridiculous than the title <laughs> oh man this sounds like a, this uh, mike we need to watch this yeah on i have show. it up on screen I, I specifically want to ask about this movie is this is this taken from reality is there any elements of reality to uh, D.B. Cooper fighting Bigfoot in the woods? I would I would recommend you guys watch it. Okay. Um, although, to spoil the movie for you right now, I would say 85% of the movie is shirtless guys working out. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> I'm on board, dude. We should do like a mystery science theater viewing uh, you know, maybe Darren can join us for this yeah. too. We could, we could all. Just I, would, I would definitely do that. It up. It's a, I guess it's a genre of movies that I wasn't aware of. 
<laughs> but it, it's called Bigfoot versus DB Cooper, and most of the movie is guys working out. Oh man! <laughs> I, I mean, what the hell? A few a few years ago, there was a, a movie called The Guy Who Killed Bigfoot and Then Hitler. Is it part of that genre of movies? Yeah, no, that's... I actually watched that movie, and that movie's pretty good. I like that movie. Okay, I heard it was actually kind of good. Yeah, it's got a pretty uh, renowned actor. Uh, who's it? Who's Sam the Sam Elliott? Yeah, Sam Elliott. Yeah, absolutely. So you're you're traveling. Where is the the convention located at, Darren? That, uh, it's going to be in Vancouver, Washington. Vancouver, Washington. You gotta you gotta go all the way up there. How many days are you gonna be spending out there? I'm gonna be spending quite a few days out there. I'm gonna do some other interviews. Um, they're at as part of the conference. Everyone's meeting at the bar, and uh, that's listed on on the website. But I'll be there hanging out, talking to D.B. Cooper. Well, fantastic. Um, so do you have any parting words, any final things that you'd like to say about uh, D.B. Cooper and uh, what may be next for you? Parting words about D.B. Cooper? I would yeah. just tell everyone to listen to the show. I mean, I've got episodes where D.B. Cooper is transgender. Um, <laughs> really? You got a, a transgender D.B. Cooper episode? Yeah, do we need to stop and talk about that for a second? Yeah, we can. We can pause. I want to talk. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he needs that's his own bathroom. This is important. A, a really good story. The first time I heard that, I was like, oh, "Holy shit, that's wild!" But um, I ended up going and meeting with the family that is, is pushing that theory, and the the foremans, Ron, a Pat, and Tammy, they are the absolute nicest, most normal people I've ever met. But they, uh, Ron and, and Pat, they befriended this gal at a small airport by where they lived and ended up buying a plane from her. Um, and then they were just at the airport hanging out all the time, fixing their planes. And he told me, it was like, it was really weird that there would be a woman in her 50s fixing her own and flying her own plane at the time in the 70s. And they befriended her. And eventually found out that um, she used to be a man. And the wife told me at the time when she heard that, that she didn't even know that was possible to, to go from being a man to being a woman. Because this is mid to late 70s, I believe, when they were talking to her. Um, and was the first person in Washington State to have gender reassignment surgery. Uh, Are you born are you saying um, that D.B. Cooper did this entire heist? He, he got the money to do the surgery? No, actually, it was before, before oh. the hijacking. So born Robert Dayton, he and this is all this person confessed to the foremans and the foremans have told me this. You can listen to the episode. D.B. Cooper was transgender. But ah. born Robert Dayton gets gender reassignment surgery. And I want to say 66 or 69. I'm sorry. I, don't know the year off the top of my head right now, but then life sort of gets hard and she's unhappy with the way things are going. So she wants to prove that she's still a badass dude. So she uh, decides to pull off the DB Cooper hijacking as a way to get back at the FAA because she cannot get her commercial pilot's license because her vision isn't good enough. So she can only just fly private man, and can never be a commercial pilot. So she pull, she dresses back up as a man because she's already transitioned into being a woman. Uh, dresses back up as a man, puts shoe polish in her hair, pulls off the hijacking, um, and then basically throws the money away because she wasn't interested in the money. She was just interested in doing the crime. Ah. Wow. Just for the thrill. Just I'm for the thrill. Him. And, you know, she told the foremans all this and a bunch of other super wild stories. And when she passed away, they wanted to write a book about it. And they weren't even sure if they were going to include the D.B. Cooper portion, but they were able to verify all these other wild stories. Like she was a, a prisoner of war in the Philippines and um, from being a merchant marine and getting in trouble with the law and just all these wild stories. They were able to verify all of those. So they, they thought, well, you know, why would she lie to us about this? Man, there's so many twists and turns to D.B. Cooper can go anywhere. There is a, another one that 
that's pretty interesting is uh, I just had him on my show. It goes by the name of Nat LaFolk, which is a, is a pen <coughs> I'm sorry, is a pen name. <clears throat> just like the guy I interviewed that's anonymous. Uh, this guy wrote a book about it that Howard Hunt was D.B. Cooper. Oh, that's great. E. Howard it Hunt? Is, Let's go with yeah. that. Let's uh, elaborate. What would that look like? So the, the timeline kind of lines up and everything. Um, and he's not even sure if he did it um, as the CIA instructed him to, or it was his own idea to do it and knew that if he was caught, the CIA would have his back because he was still accomplishing their agenda of changing airline security because there was all those hijackings. Yeah. I mean, there's so many uh, things around E Howard hunt. He was, uh, he was part of the, the Watergate uh, fiasco with Richard Nixon. It's also rumored that E Howard hunt uh, on E Howard hunts deathbed confession. He alluded that he actually shot was part of the team that shot Kennedy. The Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's right. talked about in, uh, in Nat's book also. My God, I like that one. That's interesting. So the whole conspiracy. They're all is, interesting. Yeah, I, they're all, they're I, all I think all of them are really, really fun. So is I, I, just a little bit about your philosophy, because I think here on the show, you know, Mike is very into cryptids and UFOs and, and a suppressed government and, you know, uh, alien technology and all this stuff. And, right. and I entertain a lot of this stuff because it's like, I don't know if it's not true, but it's fun to think about. Is this kind of how you approach the D.B. Cooper mystery? And is this how you kind of approach the world is just to be like, all right, I don't know. But let's, you know, might as well, like, poke at it and, and check. I would say, yes, that is how I approach the world. Uh, the reason I started my show is I was interested in D.B. Cooper. You know, I used to live right next to where that drop zone is in Woodland. So it was just a local story I was interested in. And then I, you know, I got a book as a gift. I read that. But then I started going on these D.B. Cooper forums and reading more. And just the fact that there were so many different theories and suspects that all seemed somewhat plausible, I found fascinating. And, and the people pushing these different narratives, if you go on the forums or check anything out, it's just people arguing endlessly <laughs> and calling names. I mean, some of these forums have been shut down because people were posting other people's like home addresses and threats oh online. Oh God. <laughs> so people are taking this as seriously. So we get a lot of shit for we do uh, uh, missing 411 is big. Mike and his brother are super into missing 411. A lot of our listeners exactly. are into it. But then there's a lot of people who get very angry because we do not take it as seriously as some people are taking it. And so I imagine that there are people who must be in this D.B. Cooper universe who are just like so serious about it that it's like if you divert anywhere from what their orthodoxy might be, <laughs> they must like lose their minds. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, talking like small details in the flight path, like, no, you're an idiot. The plane was two miles east at that moment in time. <laughs> it's just wild. I I appreciate I that know. that level of passion. I appreciate that level of commitment, <laughs> but it it also kind of sucks a little bit of the the fun out of these topics at the same time. Yeah, well, it can to all that constant bickering. And there are people where I'll see that each one of them posted you know, forty five comments just back and forth with each other in between one a.m. and four a.m. Ha. And it's like, <laughs> What are you doing? Back. Dedication is dedication. Got to appreciate That's that so passion. See? Oh, and I've I've dipped my toe into this water. You know, when I started the show, I was kind of like above the fray, looking down on it. But now, now I'm just swimming in it with them. I mean, there's days where I've woken up to twelve emails from one guy, and each email is ten paragraphs long. Uh -huh. Oh God. Kill me. <laughs> I don't even know how you deal with that, but yeah. Oh, That's well, awesome. Darren, thank you so much for your time, man. Please keep in contact with the show. You've been, uh, been great. Um, it's fantastic. We should watch that movie with yeah. the dudes with their shirt off and do like a mystery science theater on. on yeah, like Bigfoot a... versus D.B. Cooper. I think yeah, it's on fine. Amazon Prime right now still, but <laughs> yeah, definitely. Check out my show, The Cooper Vortex. It's free. I've got all these crazy wild theories on there. Um, you know, pretty much told 
firsthand or secondhand if the person's passed away. And then come see me at DB CooperCon. Yeah. Check out can, Darren. Yeah. DB CooperCon. Go to dbcoopercon.com. That is November 22nd. And check out his podcast, the Cooper Vortex Podcast. It's on iTunes. I'm sure it's on Stitcher. It is very well done. If you like those that uh, the serial stuff, uh, it is it is intricate. It's a good conversation, and they dig deep. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Darren. Hey, take care, and uh, definitely remain in contact with us, okay? Yeah, absolutely. If there's DB Cooper news and you guys want someone to talk about it, I'm your man. All right, man. Cool. Take Thank care, you. Darren. Thank you. There he goes. Let's, let's blow him up. Blow him up big. If you want to join the Slack or Discord, give us an email at ourbitdumbmouth at gmail.com. Check out obdmpod.com for all the social media and donation links. Be a part of the magic.